conductor Renee Baker, fusing contemporary classical to traditional gospel to sultry R&B to creative jazz. The Chicago Modern Orchestra Project, the IT Orchestra, brings raw energy and fresh talent. Baker. Well, um, just all around lover of music and the arts. And, you know, if I had to pick a title that was my primary designate, it would be as a founder and music director of Chicago Modern Orchestra Project. I was born in Bethesda, Maryland, raised in Washington, D.C. Um, I went to a performing arts high school, McKinley Tech, and um, I've been in love with music for as long as I can remember. I, I remember just being enamored of any instrument that I could carry easily and that I could get book one to, and I would go home and work and try to make sounds at that time, I had no knowledge of new music or even really jazz or anything like that. My desire was to play in either a quartet or an orchestra, but classical music was what excited me. I remember um, seeing a string quartet come to my elementary school from the National Symphony. And once they played that concert, I said, I want to do that. In, in music, and in classical music in particular, that's where I found my identity. That's where I found something that I really loved and something that I could do very well. And something, it didn't raise me above anything um, in my community, it was just different. I wasn't a cheerleader, I wasn't on a tennis team, I wasn't into sports. I loved music, that was my thing. So um, I just followed it. When it was time to go to college, I realized there was really nothing else that I loved as much as I loved music. So I just, I just followed it. And so I followed it pretty much all the way to the formation of my large ensemble of my orchestra, Chicago Modern Orchestra Project. Well, Chicago Modern Orchestra Project as a group is primarily a, a fun group of classically trained musicians augmented by um, some very well-known uh, improvisers and colleagues of mine from the AACM. And so we're able as a group to access uh, both through composed and non-traditional scores. So. On the do composed tip, yes, I love writing symphonic works, uh, chamber ensemble works, but I've also spent a lot of time over the last four or five years developing not only um, my gestural conducting language, CCL, which is a cipher conduit linguistics, but I've also um, just involved myself deeply in the study of graphic scores, non-notational, non-traditional scores, um, tactile scores, semic scores, haptic scores, it can go on and on and on. Um, so not only do we do my scores, but I've been instrumental in helping other new music composers have their works realized live by my ensemble. Melanie Cover, violinist, vocalist. I'm Salik Zia, vocalist. Abriel Ra, I'm in percussion. Steve Berry, trombone. Yo, what's up, Ben Lamar, cornet sound provider. I'm Elizabeth Brauza, violinist. <laughs> Elizabeth Diaz, flutist. Renee Baker, director of CIMA. 
I conceive ideas and ways to promote music and art and ways to marry the disciplines together that are most important to me. Um, science experiments, acting, music, electronics, film, sculpture, poetry, music. I'm right now really, really um, focusing on bringing together multi-disciplines and marrying them to a format that is, is very much like performance art. And that's how I view my concerts. My concerts are experiences as opposed to just uh, sonic listening vehicles. Um, sometimes the concerts are almost like um, art installations where there's sound, there's visuals, there's all sorts of stimuli and um, not wanting to be thought of as a jack of all trades, but someone who's in love with all these different forms of media. I like bringing them together because as people, you know, when we look at movies, we forget we're looking at visual stimuli, we're hearing music which pushes us emotionally, we have the experience of the popcorn, um, the experience of other people in the theater, the excitement, and this is the kind of thing that that I think Chicago Modern Orchestra Project and its subsidiaries brings to the table is that when people come to our events, it is an event, it is an experience, something to soak up. The marriage of art and music is not a new thing. So what, what inspired me to bring the two together um, in my own behalf and on behalf of my group was studying the New York School of Artists and Composers. So looking at the effect that Rothko and Rauschenberg and um, de Kooning and so many of the artists of that day, Jackson Pollock, the influences that they had on Christian Wolff Morton Feldman, John Cage, Earl Brown. Um, I received so much inspiration from studying the works of both genres because what the musicians of that time found out was that artists had been accessing abstraction in a way that musicians had not. So artists had thrown away the brushes and were using palette knives and decided in order to represent a vase, the painting didn't necessarily have to look like a vase. So in accessing traditional and non-traditional notation, one found an umbrella of experimentalism under which you could develop non-traditional ways of representing sound and then giving that information to willing musicians. So my graphic score series has been uh, a real delight to develop because uh, the musicians, I think, realize that um, as a composer, I'm often very happy with the happy accident. So um, what I hope to get out of them is fervor, excitement, courage, bravery, as they go inside these works and bring them to a sonic level of reality. So the painting uh, sometimes results in color field scores, in graphic scores, in automatic writing or semic writing. Um, they take so many different um, turns and when I'm working as the conductor, when I'm involved in conducted improvisations, we access a world that classical musicians alone don't do and free jazz improvisers don't do because the added, the added um, element of the conductor, which helps to shape 
the material, not necessarily choose the material, but it helps to shape the material, um, just gives us a whole, a whole nother world of sonic pleasure for a listener's ears. Once I became aware of what I now call a subculture, but it really wasn't a sub, the culture of the AACM, um, that's when I realized that music was far more than just what I had accessed in the classical world. That there was all kinds of genres, all kinds of marketing uh, categories that I was totally unaware of. Um, but under the umbrella of the AACM and my coming into contact with musicians like Nicole Mitchell, Tamika Reed, George Lewis, Douglas Hewitt, Ernest Dawkins, the list goes on and on and on. It was within this group of colleagues that I realized I had an umbrella under which I could create and find my own voice. And it was also finding that New York School of Composers that basically said, make your sound after you find your sound. Exercise your voice once you find your voice. So with that in mind, that's when I started to write, started to compose what would be generally considered contemporary classical um, music. I just call it crazy music because that's what my musicians um, call it. I started, you know, violin in the first grade, so that, that was when the dinosaurs roamed the earth, you know. <laughs> but I've, I, you know, I've never been away from it, you know. Um, I'm a baby of the 50s, and um, uh, being in music in all its forms has really added huge dimensions to my life in terms of travel and just being able to create. And um, I know I see the world very differently as a musician and as an artist than I would have had I not accessed those worlds. I wouldn't be this Renee Baker. Uh, I started on violin um, and I think at about, about third, third grade or so, there were no violas in the uh, youth orchestra program that I was involved in. And I remember Mr. Bear asking, we don't have any violas, anybody wanna move to viola? I didn't even know what viola was, but I said, I raised my hand and I said, I do. And so um, it's not so much that I made a switch because I continued to try to play both of them. Um, all through school, and I, and I still do now. But it's something about the sonority and the almost vocal-like quality of the viola that um, really resonates with me and really kept my interest, kept my interest all these years. Um, events um, in this early in these early stages of CIMA was being asked by the MCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, to um, to offer to produce um, my second opera, which was Sunyata, towards absolute emptiness, and the. Uh, that was a super special thing for me because I'd only written one other opera which had premiered in Zola, the Netherlands, 
And um, it was, I was not new to playing opera, but writing uh, chamber opera um, was a new experience. And um, I think I'm just forever grateful to uh, Yolanda Kursak and Peter Taub for just having the faith that I could pull it off. And um, it was a wonderful experience for me, and I think I gave the audience a great experience because it clearly was a marriage of contemporary music, creative music, jazz, improvisation, all based on uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I, I don't know the exact quote, but there's a quote from Picasso that kind of says, you know, inspiration exists and you can kind of wait for it, but it must find you working. Because inspiration needs something to channel itself through. So if you're not on the paper, the chances are that that idea is going to be fleeting and you'll lose it. So whether you're talking into a tape recorder or scratch, you know, scratching on a napkin or keeping a pad of manuscript paper in your car, you need to be involved in the process. That's what I believe and that's what has kept me motivated even when I didn't have an idea, you know, I, I found if I put the paintbrush to the pad, if I put the pencil to the pad, if I worked out something on the computer, uh, starting a score, even if I didn't have a, a solid idea from front to back how this work was gonna start or finish, I knew that if I was engaged, the chances were much higher that I just might get the masterpiece that day, but I had to be doing it. In, in Chicago, what I found was an identity that um, hadn't truly formed until I moved here. So I have to say that even though I'm originally from the Maryland, DC, Virginia area, my musical home, where the largest part of my development happened, was in Chicago. And Chicago, um, the people here are serious about their music. One of my missions um, for my many, many years of working under Maestro Paul Freeman was to always go after musical excellence through diversity. So as I met players and found out that we all had certain similarities, when I uh, went to form CMOP, I called on many of these same players. When I, when I first started composing, there was no Chicago Modern Orchestra Project. There was no CMOP. And then as I, I'm always one reading artist biographies and writers and composers, then I realized how many people probably passed from this life without ever hearing the majority of their music. And I thought, not happening here. So that was also part of the impetus of, okay, well, I don't plan on leaving here and not hearing most of my stuff jump off the paper. So I started an orchestra. It's just, so the extreme adventure of scoring 
um, Oscar Micheaux's Body and Soul was probably the most fun um, that we've had in the last couple of years. It was a huge project, um, which involved many recording sessions and um, a marvelous uh, collaboration with producer Don DiNicola in New York. And um, working on, on Body and Soul taught me so much about film, much that, that I didn't know. But I think um, Don felt that there was an affinity with our music from 2015, bringing the music from 2015 to meet this 1925 silent race film. Um, I, I was thrilled on many, many levels. One, with it being the first starring role of Paul Robeson, um, who's always been a huge hero of mine. Um, and not to mention the fact that our home was the Robeson Theater, coincidentally. But working on the movie and um, solidif helped to solidify the sound of what CMOP was. The Chicago Modern Orchestra Project, I believe, reached a, another level of sonic landscapes in producing the score for Body and Soul. So our, our, our audience, I think the, the demographic that CMOP serves, I think was ready for Body and Soul. Um, when you have a silent movie, of course, with no dialogue, it's, it's hard sometimes to interest people of, you know, in things from that far back. However, the score, um, as I crafted it and as um, I put it together uh, with Don, I really think, think provides a dialogue, a narrative that's equal with the acting. Um, so it's not background music. And so uh, film has become a very large part of CMOP's musical life. Body and Soul, A Page of Madness, The Gollum. So we've got our hands full um, for this year. And, and it all started with a very tiny adventure. You know, in, in, in accessing or thinking about who Renee Baker is now, who Renee Baker will be in 10 years, who Renee Baker will be in 30 years, hopefully. Um, what I always want to be is on an adventure through my music, my art, painting, sculpture, composing, what, what, I, what I envision myself as, and I've looked this word up, and I can't really find it exactly the way I mean it, but I am a recontextualist. I take things, I change things, I make things into things that make sense in my world and hope they make sense in other people's world. What I also hope is that the Renee Baker world or journey, that it gives other people inspiration. Because if I can do this, if a young black female from Washington, D.C. can become an international artist, an international a composer, an instrumentalist, just someone who's not afraid of the world than anybody, anybody can aspire to doing similar or different things. So my advice, if, if anyone was ever to even ask my advice, is to take your adventure, whatever your adventure is, Take your risks, take your chances, 
take your adventure because you never know where your journey will lead. And that's the most important thing, the journey. No one's heard me mention anything about ending up anywhere or being uh, having an end point or a particular destination. I am truly in love with the travel, with the journey of life, with the journey of creating, with the process of creating. And that's where I hope to meet people. That's where I hope, that's where I hope I meet. My goals is just, am I fulfilled in this journey? Am I making art? Am I making something that makes not just me, but other people happy? That's it.